Hey everybody, this is uh, Sean Kiesel. I'm a family medicine resident currently in my second year of residency. Um, I was asked to to go over one of the articles that I recently wrote for Picmonic, um, and uh, you'll find this video on their YouTube channel, obviously. And uh, so the article that I, I wrote was all about why osteopathic students should or should not take both the Comlex and the USMLE. So there are, there are multiple reasons, and we'll cover why you should only take the Comlex. Um, in the first portion of this, and then we'll kind of go into detail on why you should take the USMLE as well as the Comlex. So the the reality of it is, is being a DO student is tough, right? And a lot of students, they don't want to take double exams. They don't want to take the USMLE and the Comlex because that adds money, that adds time, that adds stress. Um, so let's get into why you should only take the Comlex. So there's a few reasons, and this is not all-inclusive by any means, right? I think one of the biggest reasons why you would be okay and safe to just take the Comlex, essentially, is if you're applying to mostly osteopathic-friendly programs. So what do I mean by osteopathic-friendly? Friendly meaning, hey, the program director, the assistant program director, they're both DOs. They have a history of taking osteopathic medical students. Um, you know, there's a healthy percentage of DOs in the program already, if those things are there, you can you can bet that that program is pretty osteopathic friendly. Now, this is a little bit different than osteopathic recognition. Now, osteopathic recognition came about with the um, merger, the ACGME and the AOA merger into the single accreditation system. And the, the osteopathic recognition essentially means that they teach OMT within their curriculum. That's basically what that means. But you're looking for osteopathic friendly programs. If there's a lot of DOs, the program director is a DO, then uh, I think it's a pretty safe bet that you can... Um, feel comfortable just taking the the complex. If you're going for primary care, that's another reason that you could safely take the complex. Um, most family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, most residencies in those specialties get a, a healthy percentage of osteopathic applicants, and so they're familiar with the complex, and they can gauge a competitive complex versus a non-competitive complex score, and and that's really the important thing, and that's why you would take a USMLE is because people just don't understand the complex, but. In primary care, all those residencies, they should understand what a competitive complex score is. Another reason that I find in a lot of applicants um, is that they just don't want to spend the money, right? Money's tight in med school. If you're going for primary care, you feel pretty comfortable with the complex score, you're applying an osteopathic friendly um, residency program, maybe you just don't want to spend the extra money. Step, um, USM Lee and complex are both expensive exams, and, and that's not really built into the loans in med school to take both of them. So. I, it's totally reasonable if uh, if you have a plan and you have a, a, a direction as far as where you want to go and, and you feel like you can get in to just take the complex if you don't want to spend the money. Um, and then probably the last reason why you should only take the complex is if you've been doing some USMLE practic practice exams and your scores are just not where you want them to be. Um, the reality is the USMLE is a little bit more difficult in terms of the style of questioning um, and the, the information that you have to know. It's still the same content, but it's just asked in a different way that can be tougher to to decipher an answer. So, you know, if if your USMLE scores on your practice exams are just not where you want them to be, um, and reality of that is if they're not above passing and if they're not you know decently competitive for the specialty for which you're applying, then maybe you should think um, twice about taking the USMLE in addition to the Comlex. So those are all some, some big reasons why you should only take the Comlex. Again, they are if you're focusing on osteopathic-friendly programs, going for primary care, don't want to spend the money and your US only practice exam scores are, are just not where you want them to be. Um, why you should take both exams. Um, a lot of students do this. Um, I, I didn't need to. I ended up choosing family medicine, did very well on both exams. Um, but uh, anyway, so if you're going for competitive specialties, things like interventional cardiology, radiology, dermatology, these, these can be competitive, and, and it's easy for programs to rank you higher if they can compare apples to apples. And if they only have a complex score for you, but then everybody else has a USMLE score as well, it's kind of tough to compare you to everybody else, right? And so making sure you level the playing field and uh, they, they're comparing apples to apples is, is beneficial if you're applying to one of these types of specialties. Programs that aren't DO friendly, right? There's a lot of programs that are, are kind of stuck in the stigma in the, of the past, and and they they have this this idea that DOs are, are not necessarily equal to the MD counterparts, right? And uh, unfortunately, that stigma, that bias, is still around. And um, if you're applying to programs that are MD heavy, don't have a history of taking osteopathic students, then you should probably take the USMLE just so that you can be on the same playing field and be compared, you know, apples to apples, like I already said.
And then undecided on specialty. That's another reason why you should take both. If you don't know what you want to do, right? You go back and forth from one thing to the next and some of them are competitive, some of them aren't. Um, it would be wise for you to take both exams, um, both the level one and the step one, um, to make sure that you're not shutting any doors on yourself. Because if you're undecided going into third year, um, it's better to have both of those tests in your back pocket so that you can apply to wherever you want and, and whatever specialty you want. So you're not hindered by the fact that you didn't take the exam. So as long as your, your test scores are appropriate and they're where you want them to be, then then uh, if you're undecided, you should definitely take both exams. Um, and once again, the there's a few other things. One of them is being confident in your USMLE practice scores. So if you're just crushing it, knocking it out of the park on your USMLE practice, practice exams, um, then by all means, take the USMLE score high on it, do well on it. Um, it's now a pass-fail exam on step one, but that opens the door for you to take the USMLE step two. And that uh, that can be a great a great tool to have in your pocket if you can score well on it. Um, and then if you're confident in the tough topics, there's some, there's some really tough topics that, that are on these exams. And if you feel confident, in them, you, you feel like your baseline knowledge is super high, um, then go for it. Take them both, um, and, and set yourself up to take USMLE step two and level two. Um, that way, you know, throughout the entire residency application process, everybody's comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges, not apples to oranges, right? Um, and that's kind of the goal of these exams is to help you get into residency. So that's the only reason why you would, you would take both. Um, is if you are going for more competitive residency or you're kind of undecided, right? So once again, the, the reasons to take both exams, going for a competitive specialty, programs are not DO friendly that you're applying to, right? They don't have a history of taking osteopathic students. So then you need to be on the same playing field. You need to be comparing apples to apples, that kind of stuff. Um, if you're undecided on your specialty, right? That's number three. If you don't know what you want to do, don't close any doors. Take the test as long as you're scoring high enough, which takes me to number four. If your test scores are adequate, um, go ahead and take it, right? Why not? It's, it's expensive, but it, it op keeps a lot of doors open for you. Um, and then if you're confident in those tough topics um, and your baseline knowledge is, is extremely well, then go ahead and take them both, right? There's no harm, no foul. It just costs a little bit of extra money, 600 bucks. No big deal for a med student, right? That's, that's just pocket, just chump change for a med student, I think. Um, and then, you know, after discussing those few things, I think it's also important to discuss... Is the USMLE really a harder exam? Um, a lot of people say it is a lot harder, um, but in reality, the complex and the USMLE cover the same material. Um, the difference with USMLE is that the questions dive into more detail. They're more in-depth, and they require third and fourth level um, knowledge and, and thinking to get the right answer. Um, and that means that they require some more critical thinking. Sometimes in the complex, you can get very straightforward questions that are like second order type questions, and they just don't require a lot of critical thinking. Almost every single question on the USMLE requires some third and fourth order type of stuff and, and very critical thinking. Um, and the answers are more similar, right? The, the, the answers on the USMLE, they, they're pretty comparable one to another. And so unless you know the finer details, it's easy to select the wrong choice. Why the USMLE is easier than the complex, right? We talked about why it's harder, but why is it easier? It's shorter. Um, the complex is, is quite a bit longer. It's it's an extra few, an extra hour, and I think it's an extra like eighty questions or something like that, unless it's changed recently. Um, the USMLE has uh, more break options. Um, the complex tells you when you can take your breaks, and the USMLE just gives you, uh, I think it was an hour, and you get to decide when you take that. You can take it after every block. You can take it after just take a long lunch break. You get to decide, which that makes the USMLE a little bit easier, in my opinion. Um, and then more standardized questioning. You can you can better prepare for it because you can really do repetitive questions and, and understand that there's only so many ways you can ask a specific question and there's no insane esoteric questions on USMLE like there are on the complex. And so, you know, it's, it's much more standardized in that fashion. Um, so how can you prep for both of these exams at the same time? That's kind of the last portion of this video. You know, really prep for the USMLE. If you do uh, a lot of heavy focus on getting ready for the USMLE, and then you just sprinkle in some OMM, um, whether it be with, with my course, CPM OMM, whether it be with uh, OMT Review, Online Med Ed, whatever it be with, right? Sprinkle in some OMM, give it, uh, give us a, give it a good go there, and um, really focus heavy on just studying for the USMLE and then adding that OMM. Um, Picmonic is a, is a fantastic tool to nail down some of these tough details. And so when I say get ready for the USMLE, I really mean, you know, throw some Picmonic in there and, and uh, set yourself apart from the pack and 
and start to understand the finer details because that's where that's where Picmonic comes in handy is, is getting you those finer details and getting you those extra points that a lot of people just won't get because they don't use those these types of resources. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I really, really do. I hope that this helps you decide if you should take both exams, just want to just take the Comlex. Um, I'm all about helping uh, helping med students out and um, definitely definitely check out my website. I, I think the, the link will be in the description below. So thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful. See ya.